everybody we're about to begin and I John saw the holy city the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven dawn as a bride prepared for her husband and I saw the new heaven and the new 
earth, or the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the new Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down from God, prepared as a bride in the dawn of our husband. And I heard a great voice of heaven, like the sound of a trumpet, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he shall dwell with them to be their God, and God shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people. He shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death, sorrow, pain, crying. The former things are passed away. A portion of the word of the Lord. Be honored by saying amen. amen. God bless you. Uh, you may be seated. I introduce first let me apologize for the late start. Um, Reasons that they are in our control, so uh, we proceed as the program stipulates. Introduce Sister Charlotte Dunn, who will moderate the sessions. God bless her as she comes. Good, Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. And to the all saints, praise the Lord Jesus. The Lord bless you. Could we all stand at this time as I ask Evangelist Foster to come and give the opening statement. Please receive him in Jesus' name. Uh, God bless you. You may be seated. First, I take this opportunity in greeting the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. I greet host pastor, I greet Bishop Kevin Gordon from the Apostles and Prophets Doctrine Church of Jamaica. I greet each and every leader that is here and special greetings to the bereaving family, mother, father, aunt, nieces, nephews, friends, just about everyone, the son and the daughter if they're here. Uh, my deepest condolences to the bereaving family at this time. It is no sad thing or sad feat to be undergoing what they are going and we share in this time of mourning with them. As the days progresses, I pray that the Lord will strengthen your hearts, strengthen your minds so that you may be able to you know, be encouraged and understand that the Lord can heal your hearts. At this time, as we progress throughout the service, I pray that your hearts will be blessed. I hand back over to the day's moderator. She will be, you know, going through the program. The Lord Jesus Christ bless you. Praise God. Thank you, Evangelist. At this time, could you please stand as I make welcome Pastor Harvey Clark, the grandfather. He'll be coming to open in power, with the opening power. Please receive Pastor Clark. Good morning. Let us pray. Oh Father and oh God, we thank you for this another day, a day that you have made, we are glad and rejoice in it. We thank you for life, hallelujah. We thank you for your love and your mercies towards us. Today as we come, Lord, to pay the lost rites, hallelujah, of the dead to the living, we thank you that will give us this wonderful opportunity. Hallelujah. We're glad to know that we know you as our Lord and our Savior. Hallelujah. And we can give you thanks and praise uh, in a time like this, in a time of bereavement. But we know God that he is one that sits at the head. Hallelujah. And we have no doubt uh, that one of these days we're going to see you burst the clouds of heaven and come forward and redeem. Hallelujah. 
Oh, we give you praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah for this program that uh, hallelujah we are going through today. We thank you, God, that you will be with us, guide and protect each and every one. Hallelujah. We thank you. Oh, the family at this time, Lord God, which are a part of the family. I pray that they will gain strength, uh, hallelujah, peace, happiness, knowing that it is appointed unto man once to die, but after that came the judgment. So, Lord God, although we cannot get used to death, but Lord God, we already know that one of these days, each and every one, hallelujah, will see that. We thank you, Lord, for that way to bring forth your word today. Hallelujah. I prayed for such a person, Lord God. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will oh, give her an anointing, a fresh anointing, a fresh anointing. For the anointing breaks the yoke. Hallelujah. Oh, everyone that are in this building today will be rejoiced and be glad to know, hallelujah, that you came to save that which was lost. Have your mighty way and take full control as we continue this wonderful program in Jesus' name. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Could we all say in Jesus' name? We'll move along. Moving along. Opening him when we all get to heaven. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy.
Yes, I think she deserved it, although she's in the casket. She deserved that round of applause. She would be with him to the different medical places where he's to be cared for. Without any frown or complaint, Judy would be at the side of the father doing almost everything for him. Today, the family has lost a link. That would mean much to everyone. We will remember her always, her cheerfulness, her smile. And may I say her personality? She's good looking. And all of us here today shows our support by coming here to say that Judy meant much to us. Thinking of the terrain of the road to come up here must have meant a lot to us and the Lord Plains to be here. Let us remember she is gone on before, but three children, not two, three children are left. We pledge ourselves to continue to train them and to support them as Judy did in her past life. Thank you very much. And as a part of the family, may I say thanks to all of you who have come to share in our moments of grief. God bless you. Thank you very much. At this time, we'll be having a tribute from the Little London Primary School. Could you please come at this time? Little London, are you here? Good afternoon, church. As the principal of the London Primary School and the Infant Department, we offer condolences to the family. And I'm here with my senior teacher, Ms. Atkinson, uh, my classroom teacher, Mr. Jones, my guidance counselor, Ms. Nadine Williams, and a group of students from the London Primary School. And we are here to sing. And uh, I just hope that whatever we are going to sing will actually satisfy the family. And actually, when I was coming up here, trust me, my head started hurting me. And when I came, and I parked right out there, I saw my auntie-in-law. And I was like, what is she doing here? And this is just a secret. I was like, what is she doing here? Then when I got out, I saw my uncle. And I said, what are these people doing here? I went over there and I asked them, what are they doing here? And they said, they said to me, Mrs. Davis, we are here because of my uncle's granddaughter. And uh, Tulian is always at school. She always passed me on the driveway coming to school with her child because we are here to present Cameron Levy. And when I realized it was her, because I didn't even know, I know Cameron was at school and when I saw him, it was a boy that I loved. And when I saw him and I heard that he was going to be buried today, I said to myself, I'm going. So when I went to work this morning, and of course I heard that teachers are in strike. So I said, all right, that's nice. I will be able to get there on time. So I am here and we are going to put our song together and I hope you all will enjoy what we are going to sing. into song, I would like to say a pleasant day to you all. Life is a mixture of sunshine and rain, good things, bad things, pleasure and pain. Gone too soon we may say, but the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. As coordinator, 
and teacher for Cameron. I see him looking in my direction. As well as for Santana. I just want to take this opportunity to say, Cameron, Santana, we know that the death of your mother is indeed a heartbreaking and mind-blowing experience. We say to you both, when death has come and taken our loved ones, it leaves our home so lonely and dreary. Then we will wonder why others prosper, living so wicked year after year. I say to you both, Father, further along, you'll understand this. Further along, you'll understand why. I say, cheer up family members. Cheer up Cameron. Cheer up Santa. For we'll understand it all by and by. Good afternoon, everybody. Yes. First Corinthians 15, from 51 to 58. Behold, I saw you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be risen incorruptible. And, was, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on his incorruption. And this mortal must put on his immortality. So when the corruptible shall have put on incorruption. And this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be bought pass the same that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the sting of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 58 lands. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast and movable, always abound in the works of the Lord. For as much as we know that we labor is not in vain in the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Some sweet day, I am going away, I'm going to leave this world, no more to roam. Some sweet day, when life is over, some sweet day. Thank you. 
Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like Jasper stone, clear as crystal. And all had and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. And on the east three, um, on the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve fountains, foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And verse 15 says, And he talked with me, had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the walls thereof. This is the reading of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you very much. Please be seated. At this time we'll be having two open tributes. Could you please come? The persons. Please come. For the tributes, could you please come? Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. God is good all the time. If you're happy, you know it's an amen. If you are alive, let me hear you praise the Lord. Let us weep like those who have no hope. Because we know one day that will what? Die. One day that will what? We learn about the new Jerusalem. I want to be there. I don't know about you. But I can't wait. You understand? Um, I just want to bring condolences from the Sylvia Adventist Church in Strapoge um, to Judy. I got to know her when she was sick and we went and prayed in the hospital and sing. But you know what? God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And whatever God does is well done. What do you say? Yes, ma'am. He doesn't do anything without a reason. But I just want to say condolences to the family and just believe and have hope because tomorrow will be a better day. I'm just going to sing a song on behalf of the family that gives us hope. Heaven is a family reunion. Prepare for the save and the bless. With Jesus at the head of the table, the blood bought redeem or the guests. With music provided by the angels, what a wonderful time that will be for heaven is a family reunion. Get ready and come go with me.
Get ready and come go with me. Oh, your reservation is paid for. It was purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Your mansion is ready and waiting. And the Savior said, come where I am. Oh, all those loved ones are promised to meet you.
just as he said. Praise God. So we rise just like how Jesus rise on that day. Hallelujah. But you got to be baptized in his name and be filled with his spirit to rise like when he rise. Praise God. Could you all stand at this time? Could you all please stand? We'll be collecting an offering. Praise God. At this time, I'm going to ask my bishop please to come and bless the offering and the givers in the name of the Lord Jesus. Would you all stand, please? Thank you. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercies. As we're about to give back the portion of which you have blessed us with, we do so without hesitation, without reservation, and without doubt, without wavering. We ask that you let it be a sweet spell and savor. We give as unto you. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding be granted, and it may be used to your glory to your honor. This I pray through faith in Jesus' name. God bless you. Could the ushers proceed? The Lord is my share. Truly, we have come to a time where it's for us to extract from the Word. The Word is so multifaceted that whatever area in your life that's lacking, Jesus can fulfill whatever that is. And to the family, children, mother, father, as I said before, my deepest condolences to you, and I pray that you open up your heart as the word comes, the word does heal. And it's the time for you to just lay down everything in the hands of the Lord and let the word do its work. Ask it kindly for everybody to be respectful as well. Parents, monitor your children. Adults, you should be understanding how to conduct yourself. Ask for that likewise. And at this time, I ask us all to stand as we receive the preacher for the day, Bishop Kevin Gordon. Thank you. While you're standing, thank you very much. While you're standing, I'll do it very succinct. I'm reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And it reads, one, two, three, and four. A good name is better than precious ointment, and a day of death than the day of one's birth. It is better to go into the house of mourning than to go into the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by sadness the countenance of the heart is made better. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of the fool loves party. I go into the house of Mary. Father, we thank you for your spoken word, written word, incarnated word. Let it root up, pull up, destroy, and build. Forces of the enemy, I bind it in the name of Jesus. Come against the principalities and powers. Diabolic forces that hang around. We cramp and paralyze your schemes and their plans. Through the blood of Jesus, you gave me authority over devils. And I stand with that authority to execute your word in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. To the Lord Jesus Christ, firstly, thanking him for the things given to me. The things he will never ever give to me. I appreciate him for that. I also am grateful for the Lord for setting the angels around the believers. Thank you God for Evangelist Foster, Chief Moderator, done all the dignitaries, men and women of God in your official capacity in the congregation. I also extend greetings to well-wishers, family, and all of us. My grieving and sympathy to the family, of course. I baptized Sister Tudian in the name of Jesus years ago. And um, it's a sad affair for me, but the Lord is in charge. Amen. Giving God thanks for the opportunity to declare his word at this 
funeral. Apology for, from uh, Minister Gordon, who should be here. Thank you, God, for the saints who journey with me from their quarters. God bless you. I'm going to be very, very short, very succinct. And I wrote a, a theme just to make it sink in our souls. It is the main reason, and I am thankful. The main reason, and I am thankful. We read a very unfamiliar verse, and very strange to most of us. It's better to go to funerals, to the house of mourning, than to go to a party. The main reason for funeral, I might be controversial today, but I'm not going to go with culture. I'm going to go what, of what the word of God declares of funeral. Because funerals today aren't what God designed. Again, there's going to be debate. There are other reasons for funeral, but there is one main reason why the Creator designed funeral. And no matter of fact, in the biblical times, only guns and these funeral parlors would have lost tremendously. They wouldn't exist. Because when you die, you're buried before sunset. And I think in my mind that's good. It would have eliminated the package of million dollars and five million dollars spending on the dead. And the living needs it. However, that's another matter. But if we die today and bury later, it would have saved a lot of money. Again, I'm controversial. For when God designed funeral, it was not for dress up. And based on what I see about funeral today, it's a fashion house. It's a place where my meat man and you know my jock took on the corner and drink a liquor and smoke a scrub and uh, somebody come in their tight jeans or come with their half naked self and show off. Now, if you don't know me, my mouth have no bondage when I hold the mic because I don't preach for money. I preach the word and I have no friend when I get here. The main reason we are to gather in one place and remember our loved ones. That's cool. That's okay. But that's not the primary reason. Hence you find funerals get out of hand. The Holy Ghost says it is more advantageous, he used the word better, to go into the house of mourning than to enter at soul splash or something. It tells me that funeral was not designed for any pleasure. It is a time that the Creator said that we should lock down our cellular, cut down the communication around us, get into a mode of consciousness, get into a time frame in our minds when we analyze where we are. The caskets, are, they, are, they are expensive. The other, the, the other day I saw a hearse coming and there was this six girls half naked with prom prom and they, it was a glass thing and they were like cheerleaders and i said look at the abomination that's not what god designed of how we should put away our dead he said it's a time when we come into the house of mourning verse 4 whereby which we contemplate that we are next no matter how young you are and how much trap back you drink, we are next. Glory to God. Hey, I'm going to take my time because some people are getting offended already because I'm not cultural, I'm not traditional. I am spiritual. I'm going with what the Creator said. The funeral 
is not to show off your clothes or to show off your car. The funeral is for us to sit down and look at the casket and say, Papa Jesus, fix me up. Shut up, Hallelujah. To look at what's happening before us. This is why, you know, some church they put it at the back won't criticize something. Put it at the front because we will look at the casket and say, Lord Jesus, I need to make it right. You notice the funerals today. They are packed with excitement. And everybody now is just in this euphoria and delight and has forgotten the main objective why the Holy Ghost designed this gathering. When I'm bringing back why funeral was designed by God. Now, some people say, Pastor, we have God church to be a Christian. Well, can I add I'm the doctor? Your home was not made for worship. It's not a school. You sleep, you rest, and you go to university. Or you go, when you can't run down, you bring it your yard. You bring it to the garage. So the creator designed different places for different things. Hospital for sure food. Church for your soul. Hallelujah. And what I'm seeing with funeral nowadays, it is a fashion house. It is a Broadway walk. Hallelujah. And we go on, when we go, the excitement and the, the noise and the singing, and we come to have Thanksgiving service. It's no Thanksgiving service. It is a contemplation and a meditation time. We talk to the dead in the casket, oh, we miss you. And some of them is in hell, waiting for, while some are in Zion, and we're still talking to the dead. It is better to go into the house of mourning than, than to go into the house of party, for that is the end of all men. It is appointed unto man. The word appointed means it's a reservation. It's not you, Seti. I'm not Miss Seti. All of us have a reservation with Mr. Death. But I'm glad today that Jesus went ahead. Hallelujah. And met with death, conquered death, and tell me that if I trusted him, he is the resurrection of the life. So when I face death, I can say, that where is? Your sting! Inevitable, inevitable. It has to happen. You could exercise. I always give this analogy. This man who exercises and eat right. He has a fine car. He has good education. Yes, and they say that education, you know, it, it, it never decay what is lying. Because when you reach 90, I may ask you true and true, how much you tell me about 30. Can we see now? Education has its limit. Education could save me cancer in my lungs. I know doctor and earth could save me. With all what the achievement they have. But Papa Jesus, heal my lungs. Shut up, doctors. So there's a place for education. Let me go back to the man with fit and nice. Hey, and him wills. They look good and muscle up. And go to the gym and exercise, drink up in tonic. And then he goes into his Benz convertible. And a trailer wrote him off. He died fit. He died dedicated. So let me bring us back now. When you walk into a funeral, you say, hey, lock down the chatting. Lock down the disrespect. Not the, my, even the dead you should respect when you come to a town funeral. Shut up your mouth and say, let me come and sit down. You know why you nobody talk to me? Come in need to think today. God a winner for me, dear. My casket longer than that. I want to make it in heaven. For behold, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth are passed away. And there was no more sea. People of God, there is coming a day when we have to rise again to give an account whether we are sinner or saint. So this is the place. Garage for car. Hospital for sick. 
schools for education, church, church for your soul. Hallelujah. So you sit down today and say, God, am I in the right frame of mind right now? Is my mind, is my mind ready to meet you? Am I next in my family? No matter how young you are, no matter how you feel fit, no matter, you just begin to contemplate God. I hear what the preacher say. I need to look at my soul right now because it is appointed. There's a reservation for every man and I need to look now. It is a meditation time. But when the funerals of our hell today, the amount of activities and people clap and cheer and they say they are lively and it happened. No, no, it's supposed to be serious, supposed to be grave. Come from the word grave, serious. That's why we go to a grave. It's serious, it's deadly. A time when I look, I pause with you and I say to myself, I could go to church. Going to church don't make me a Christian. I've been going to garage to fix my car all these years. I've never been a mechanic. I have gone to hospital many years and I've never become a doctor. Coming into church don't make you a Christian. Many of us come inside here, we live in the same. It is your conviction that you have a brief time here. Here's my conclusion. The Bible said man is like tent. Man is like tabernacle. In other words, this body that you're looking at, the Bible in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1 says, we are a tabernacle. A tabernacle is a tent, people of God. Those who are listening to me. The Holy One like no body to a tent. No, listen to that. A tent can't take too much soil. A tent can't take stuff. Look at us. We are so fragile. We are so soft. We act like we are the baddest man. Eh? Good man have him. You know what him say? To him, confidence in that gun. If he gun stick, he get knocked. We are tent. We soon be pulling down. The creator is pulling down. How are you pulling down us? You see the age. Look at us. We were 16 yesterday. Some of us lost our teeth already. Some of us have gone down or our, our, our breast was you know, we say it was this and that, but now it's lengthy. We men have true. Our tent is pulling down. We are going right down to the ground. And when your tent, you can't do nothing for keep up the tent. Drink up your jamba, no man. If you drink up your vitamin, no man. Great tire and drink up your jogger. That can't stop the tent. Hello. Yesterday we were 16. Look at us now. And some of us we are. We are elderly people and we acting like we are young girl. Eh? Eh? We still are going like we are young girl. Uh, and we old man I go like we are young boy. Uh, stay in your lane, man. If you're whole, you're whole. If you're young, you're young. Don't try to do nothing. Just step out of your age. So we are like tent. And we are being pulled down. But the Lord said, I'm going to give you a house. That is made without hands. Hallelujah. Oh, I show you a mystery. We not shall all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Anybody here want a new car? Yes. Anybody here want some, a new house? Yes. Anybody here want some new, oh yes, new clothes, new perfume. What am I going to want a new body? You know what a new body? We don't see nobody around a new body. Man, if you hear that, if you hear that new knee, I give you. Then I talk to them. You get that new knee. Eh? Me not like long time ago. Come with my Lord. Praise God. And God is giving away new bodies, and mankind is coveted. Praise be to God this day. Remember, we gather here to contemplate. Now, who in the house return to the seriousness of funeral? I'm not knocking Sister Tudy, but I didn't know I would be preaching at her funeral at age 26. If you asked me that years ago, I would say no. None of us knew that. It is a lesson to us, church. I end by offering a place of Calvary.
you are to come. You came here today not to comfort the bereaved family. The main reason is you and I must now think are we sure about tomorrow? Which one of us can show the title for tomorrow? Do you own it? No. We have today. Sing the Lord. Stand on your feet here to stay, please. This is the end of the sermon. Stand on your feet, please. Even if your knees are hot, because we're going out now. And lift your hands to God and say, Make me ready, Lord. Hallelujah. And must be ready. I don't care how religious you are. Praise God. Make me ready. It's a personal request. From pastors to bishop must make that request. Make me ready, Lord. Hallelujah. Because I came here for you to tell me, get it right. Hallelujah. I came here today for you to tell me, make it right. Make it right to the creator. But that's the purpose of the Together in the place of mourning. Anybody, anybody don't make it right yet? It's not too late. Give it over to the Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Will you come and pray for you wherever you are? Before I hand over the mic. You know yourself, you're contemplating. I want to pray for you before I leave. Because we came to contemplate. Hallelujah. Not only to hear the eulogies and the tributes. But to contemplate. I want to leave a brief prayer with those who realize the true purpose of your life. Father, we thank you this moment. We thank you for bringing back the consciousness of why you designed this gathering. It's not a place of joy and felicity, it's a place of deep meditation. Because I know that when you will call. I pray to be Lord, and those who respond to the shock word will make it right. You baptize in your name and fill with your spirit and live a godly and holy life. Those who respond when they come to the altar and their sick and their own side, no weapon form against them shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, I speak a word. I speak to you through the blood of Jesus. Oh, see, I
what it has sent for to do. Praise God. At this time we'll be having the eulogy. Praise God from Miss Allen, Miss Kelly Allen. You're here? Okay, thank you for coming. She'll be doing the eulogy. Please receive her in the name of the Lord Jesus. teaching her daughter also. There are many memories that we will have of Tudian and I hope that I do some justice to it. Like a shadow in the moonlight, like a whisper of the seas, like the echoes of a melody just beyond our reach. In the shadows of our sorrow, past the whisper of our goodbye, Love shines through eternity, a heart beat from our eyes. Eulogy for the late Tudian Sadiqi Clark. Tudi, dance. Tudian was born on June 18, 1987, to parents Govan Gale and Glenroy Clark. She was the first of three children for her mother, first of four for her father the only girl in the lot, a true diamond in the rough. Tudian's formal education began at the Salvation Army Basic School at Bath, Kentucky, then the Kentucky Primary and Junior High School then, and it continued later at the Froome Technical High School. While living in Kentucky, she met and fell in love with the Jimmy and their union produced her first daughter, Santana Brown. She had another child, Cameron Levy, in 2009, while she was still living here in Kentucky. She later moved to Broughton in Little London, where she continued to raise her children and to love her family from afar. Tudian was big on family. She took care of everyone. Her parents, her children, and even her siblings. She was always calling and asking, you hear about the job Feria? Anyone who knew her would remember her big, bright smile. A smile so bright that it lit up any room she entered. You would be met with, what a one. What a one with now? She made friends easily. Once you became her friend, you were a friend for life. She was always telling jokes. The time spent with her will have you laughing until tears ran from your eyes. And then she would crack some more jokes. Tudian was a foodie. Although this was not evident from her small stature, she loved food. Her love of for porridges, potato pudding, and anything curried was out of this world. She also loved her blended juices. Anything that you can blend, Tudy will blend it. She loved sewing and combing hair. Her hairstyles made you feel like one in a million. Tudy and loved the Lord. She raised her children to love the Lord. She was baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost 
at the Apostles and Prophet Doctrine Church at McPhee in Westmoreland. She led a very active church life. Her favorite song to sing was, I have committed my life to him. She would always be singing this song, whether hard at work or while at rest. She worked very hard for her children. She held employment at the Negro Golf Course and various other establishments during her time. In September 2022, she had her last child, Kiana Spence, which caused her to be hospitalized. She spent her remaining time in hospital. She fought the good fight. She did her best until God said, come child, come home and rest. Trudy and transitioned on April 20, 2023. She is survived by three children, Santana, Cameron, and Kiana. Her parents, Govan and Glenroy, three brothers, Orville, Ricardo, and Roger, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, other relatives, and friends. Don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. I'm following the path God laid for me. I took his hand when I heard him call. I turned my back and I left it all. Tasks undone must say that way. I found that peace at the close of the day. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish for you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full. I savored much. Good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seemed all too brief. Don't let it now with undue grief. Lift your hearts and share with me. God wants me now. He said. May her soul rest in peace and perpetual life shine on her. Sleep well to the end. Thank you, Ms. Allen, for the energy. I'm asking this time the family members to please come. And Pastor Cynthia Reed will be coming to pray for the bereaved family. Pastor Reed, family members, could you please come?
Jesus. Almighty and most everlasting Father, we come before you this afternoon on behalf of Judy and family. Hallelujah. God, we place them before you right now. We ask you, Almighty God, to cover them. We pray, Almighty God, that you will lay your hands on all of them. Father, we pray for the children most of all. They are young. God, we ask for special guidance upon their life. We pray, God, that you will set somebody, Lord God, in place of Trudy and Lord, who will grow these children to know you. God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will cover their minds, cover their hearts, cover their soul, God. We ask you, Almighty God, to be with them. Bring comfort to them, God. We pray for the family, Lord God. We ask you, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, to cover them, God. To bring them to a place, God, of consciousness, God, where they see that you, God, is God. God, all of them is not saved. And those who are not saved this afternoon, God, I bring them mostly before you. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that God, they will look to Zion Hill. Lord God, from whence cometh their help? God Almighty, we ask that you will lay your hands on all of them. We pray, God, that you will bring them to the place where they understand, God, that they can bring their hurt into you. You said, God, when, when we are hurting, God, hallelujah, we will bring, we can bring them at your feet. And God, you will take care of them. God, right now they are hurting. Right now, Lord Jesus, they are grieving. Right now, God, they are going through something, God, that only you alone can help them. Cover them under your blood, Daddy Jesus. Almighty God, we pray right now that your holy hands, hallelujah, will be laid upon the mother and the father. Oh, God Almighty, when I met her at the hospital, God, I could see that her heart, oh, God, were bleeding. But right now, God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will bring peace and contentment to her life. Bring peace and contentment to the father life, God. We ask, God, that the entire family will sit at the feet of Jesus and will feast at, at you and you, God. God, cover them under your blood right now. Help them to understand, God, that they can trust you in whatever they are going through. They can rely on you, God. They can lean heavily on you. They can rest in the arms of sweet Jesus. Cover them, Jesus. Cover them under your blood and continue to be with them in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. We'll be having the session of him. This is the order. Paul Bearers, could you please get yourselves ready? The song of the song and this is the procedure of Bishop. Yeah. 
Thank you, everybody. For as much as it please Almighty God. Live, live. 
and in his wise deeds to take out of this world a soul for himself. Earth to earth, get over here, Edward. Ashes to ashes. And dust to dust. Hold on, hold on. You know what? Wait, no, what let's go, no, let's go. Leave. Leave. Leave and turn. All right. Stop. Come over, look a bit to the side. Then come over, look a bit. Look a bit. Look a bit, so. To me. Yeah, yeah. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, right, dust to dust. Yeah, that's good. That's it. That's it. That's it. Better days are coming by and by when we be the city in the west. Sorrow will be over.
Selamat menikmati.